Today's guest lives and breathes fashion and glam. Shannon Porter joins us to talk about founding Metro Glam, being a fashion merchandiser, and finding the inspiration behind her business. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, please let's give Shannon the biggest, warmest welcome to the show. Thank you. I am so excited to have you today. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, and I've been looking forward to this for the longest. You are all things fashion and glam, and when I saw you come out of the elevator in a sparkle, kind of flat shoe, and I had a sparkle flat shoe today, I, hey. I knew that I was doing something right, because you are a North Star for me for fashion and glam. I've known you for quite a while, and I'm, I'm so inspired by you. Um, I, I love Metro Glam. I, I would love for you to start by telling everybody what Metro Glam is really all about because you are the founder. I am. And, and it's uh, such, it, it's just fantastic. So what is Metro Glam? So Metro Glam is a lifestyle brand and fashion portal that I came up with. It's an infusion of my creativity and inspiration that I have. Um, it's my baby. Yeah. It's something that I'd like to introduce to the world. It's my sense of style that's reinterpreted in design. And it's something that's going to evolve into something greater, which I'm going to tell you more yeah. about. Yeah. And what was your inspiration to create like a line of clothing to show at Fashion Week? My inspiration behind showing my line at Fashion Week was, at the moment, I was thinking inclusivity in an industry that's so exclusive. I wanted to bring something to people that wanted to take advantage of Fashion Week while introducing my line, yeah. but couldn't get to the front row of like Gucci show, the yeah. Fendi show, and whatever like hard to get tickets in town they were. So I was like, hey, I, I have a line. Um, there's a consumer population that's very interested. That's right. I wanted to do it in an elegant way in a penthouse rooftop setting. Yeah. Invite only if you RSVP properly, you'd be a part of it. Yeah. Just people who are passionate about fashion and just wanted to transfer their energy of the night. It was just, it's just a night of an exchange of energy and a showcase of my line. The line that you showed at Fashion Week had a point of view, it had a look. There was, I saw lace, I saw applique. There, there was something there. What was your inspiration in creating that line? And who did you collaborate with along the way to make that line a reality? I would define my line as glitzy, mm -hmm. high fashion, form-fitting, yeah. while tucking all the imperfections away, yeah. and just the craziest, unique applique that just my aim was to do it in silhouettes that couldn't be duplicated in. Yeah. I don't believe they can be. I, it is a very, very unique line. I, it's almost like like a, a, a cat suit, like a, a one piece, but it, that applique gives it such a chic, different edge, and it is very flattering. Who do you work with to create it? Like who who makes the clothing? How do you think about building your team to make this line a reality? Well, I've been fortunate enough to seek inspiration in my fashion merchandising on a day to day. I got to look at designers and lines. I've gotten to implement my own level of design in my travels. I have friends in Cambodia, friends in India, friends in Dubai, friends that specialize in manufacturing the fabric in which we can put applique on. If you look, a lot of these designers get their fabric from Turkey. In addition to gathering a network, it sounds like, your network, when you say that, when you say friends, these are probably people who you know you can trust, yes. who have a product you can trust, right? And if you're gonna put your name on it, you need to partner in the right way, so that network is important. Aside from like the network, what other components do you say you value when you think about taking your business to the next level? Networking, definitely, I agree, that's a big one. What else do you value? You know, is it social media, is it PR, like what, what is it? Both, yeah? especially social media. Um, with regards to people I've run into on mm -hmm. social media, even when I've only had like a 100 or 200 follower count, just yeah. people who have along the way saw my yeah. vision, they saw it before I did. Right. And some of their input and influence is what helped me to position it in the way that I have this year. You have a, a long background in running your own businesses, yes. right? I mean, I Metro Glam is not your first rodeo, if you will. What, when you think about your career as an entrepreneur, 
and your journey. What other ventures have you done that stand out to you? Yeah. My first venture venture was the luxury car rental business that I still have. That came out of a fascination, my own fascination for high-end cars. Like, yeah. you know, down south, okay, Bentley, awesome, but I never get to drive it because I'm traveling or I'm up here working on Metro Glam. So people started asking me at gas stations, like, hey, you know, what are you doing? And can you rent your car to me? So I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. But then I'm like, all right, the Bentley's nice to have. Now I need an SUV to drive my mom around. And I'm just like, hey, I became an intermediary in that respect, kind of like a third party yeah. where I oversee the maintenance. I'm just like, hey, I can get miles put on these. Cause you know, it's those type of cars need to be driven. Yeah. It's almost bad if they sit there. So I'm like, hey, let's I agree. make some money. So you're and, solving yeah. a need for the owner. Right. There's a market who wants to pay a lot of money to use that item. Yes. You see this connection and you design a business to be basically the, the centerpiece of this all thing this all coming together. Yes. How do you take that that spirit and the essence of what you did there and those lessons that you learned in that business into Metro Glam where you are looking to break out and stand out in the fashion space. Well just as I've taken my quirks and kinks and desire for flashy and purchase cars and you also listen to what the consumer wants just as those consumers were at the gas station yeah. like hey can I use this you listen to them in fashion. That's right. What's next for Metro Glam? I'm gonna morph this into a fashion portal. Not okay. only is it gonna be an interpretation of my designs and my lines, but I also have, I'm gonna do an app, and Style on Demand is an idea that started award weekend. I was award recipient escort for the VMAs, the BET Awards, and what would happen, celebrities would show up, like at the last BET Hip Hop Awards, there were these Yves Saint Laurent boots. They were $10,000 boots, all crystals, all iced out. Mm -hmm. Four girls showed up in the same boots. And they were like, you know, oh my God, like, gee, this girl has on my boots. So then that's, someone that's would call thing. me and they were just like, you know, Shannon, what else do you have? Yeah. She's about to go up there and accept her award. And this celebrity already went up there and accepted one with her shoes on. What is she going to do? So then I got to where I got to know stylists in different areas. And it's just like a fashion emergency. Yeah. So they're like, super save a fashion foe. And I dispatch a stylist out there. And that's what style on demand is going to be. So I'm going to have that as a part of my portal. The dream seam is going to be something else that so on the dream seam is if someone is truly sustained in a fashion emergency, like if they're on a red carpet and rip their dress. Yeah. I dispatch a seamstress or someone out there. And what about like normal people? Like I would say for me, like I'm, I'm not going to be a guest on the red carpet. Although maybe I shouldn't speak too soon. But let's say I, I'm not on the red carpet, but I'm doing something like I love the ballet and I go to the ballet gala as a guest and I'm in New York and I want to dress up and feel beautiful, but I'm not at that level. Can I still get involved and get help even though I'm in, like I'm more of a regular person? You absolutely can. Yeah? That's the Style on Demand app. Yeah. You're going to download it and wherever you are, um, you need our help. And yeah. we we got you. Yeah. It's not that $30,000 dress going down yeah. the runway yeah. that you know you're never going to be yeah, able to get exactly. your hands on. It's that five to $800 style yeah. that's like, hey, you know what? Yeah. I want to um, get into, um, before we close, like how you differentiate in the marketplace, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, with regards to Style on Demand, it's just that you rent the runway, it's an awesome concept. Yeah. I studied it, it's a great idea, yeah. but it's just that style on demand. Somebody sustained in a fashion emergency right then and there, right. we got you right. within a moment's time, like within the hour. There, you know, you rip something, it's like, okay, you're gonna get a replacement, it's gonna be tomorrow, so yeah. what are you gonna do for the rest of the night? So it's the urgency. Yes. Thank you so much for opening up and sharing your concepts and experiences. We are now going to play a game that we call Hustle Time. Team, yes. may I please have 60 seconds? All right. All right, count me down. Three, okay. two, one, go. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Favorite part of a s'more? Marshmallows. One word you wish you could take away from the English language? Ain't, if that's even word. Favorite breakfast food? Avocado. Would you rather have more time or more money? More money. Peanut butter cups or M&Ms? M&Ms. Sour candy or sweet? Sour. Meatballs or fish? Fish. Go-to karaoke song? Um, don't Run Away From Me by Whitney Houston. Finish this <laughs> sentence. When I dance, I look like? Beyonce. Well, song that really is currently that. stuck in your head? Oh my god. Chain smoke or something just like this. What's the first app you open in the morning? Instagram. Fireplace or fire pit? Fireplace. Large dogs or lap dogs? Lap dogs. 
chocolate, milk, or dark? Dark. If you had to eat one thing for breakfast every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? Cucumbers. Would you rather um, give up pizza or sandwiches for life? Sandwiches. I, but I do, I, can I just ask it, I want to know, oh, yes. because you, you said some things earlier about all these friends and, and your network. What's the best place you've traveled? Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I had to do that. I know it was a little bit outside of the buzzer, but I, I think it's okay. I'm, I'm going to go with it since I'm the host. I, I say so. All right, here we go. We have one, two, three, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. <laughs> nice job. Favorite part of your day? Morning. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Don't try to please everyone. Worst piece of advice? Have a drink to loosen up before an event or a taping. <laughs> <laughs> How do you use your career to inspire others? I just encourage people to put their best foot forth and do what they do best. Ever felt like walking away? No. One thing you still need to learn? Time management. Mm -hmm. What do you want people to learn from you? That it's okay to be you and yeah, walk in your own light. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? Uh, you mean after here or next? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You what interpretation. I know. I'm All right. Well, what's next is just making the world a better place through fashion and that's going to be. Who inspires you? My mom. Who challenges you? My sister. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs>